Florida State has to make a bowl game. Plain and simple. The Seminoles have to go bowling in 2022. Mike Norvell is just 8-13 heading into his third year in Tallahassee, and the pressure is on. But luckily for him, he has his best team yet. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. Ready to predict the Florida State Seminoles record for this upcoming college football season. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks on our website, thegridironexpert.com. I promise you guys, you do not want to miss out on any of that, any of the content we have here on the channel. We want you to become a part of our team, want you to become a part of what we're building, so you don't miss out on any of the college football content that we have for you year round. So you look at Florida State, guys, and you take a look at their numbers provided by College Football Encyclopedia. Florida State went 5-7 and seven last year, but have four one-possession losses. Four one-possession losses easily could have been a bowl team, especially if they had taken down a team like Jacksonville State. But the Seminoles returned 78% of the team they had last year. That's good for 17th in the country. So 17th when it comes to returning production. They need improvement on both sides of the ball, and Norvell addressed that with the returning starters and also the transfers he brought in. 80th in the country last year on offense, but Jordan Travis improved drastically down the stretch. We saw his accuracy improve by 8% in 2021. He threw nine touchdowns and just one interception in his last six games. A lot of wide receiver transfers coming in to try to help that passing attack. The offensive line, though, the biggest area of concern after allowing 36 sacks in 2021. The defense ranked 66 in the country last year. But they returned six starters, including a defense that was top 10 in the country when it came to red zone defense. The Seminoles should have a very strong secondary and a run defense that improved drastically last year and should improve drastically again this year. They're going to need it to improve drastically if they want to reach that six win mark. So we take a look at their schedule, guys. They open up the year in week zero, August 27th, against Duquesne. That's going to be an easy win. Should be an easy win. We do not need a Jacksonville State uh, repeat. Then they get into New Orleans on September 4th, a true week one, Sunday night game against LSU. This is a big game. Big for Mike Norvell to get a quality win early on. Big for LSU and Brian Kelly for him to get his first win as head coach of the Tigers. A game for the Tigers that really is right in their backyard. To me, guys, this will be a game that is a battle in the trenches, right? Who's going to win the line of scrimmage? Ultimately, that's going to be LSU. LSU has one of the best defensive lines within the SEC. Some would say maybe even in the nation. And I think that's going to give Florida State's offensive line that's improving, but still has a ways to go, going to give them some issues. I believe Jordan Travis is going to be forced into too many mistakes. LSU's defense, the difference maker in this one, and the Tigers win in New Orleans, Florida State 1-1. One one. They get their bye week early. Again, they're going to get two bye weeks because they did play in week zero, so one early, one late. Then they take on Louisville on the road, a game that is huge for both teams. Huge for Florida State and Louisville when it comes to their bowl hopes because Louisville desperately needed to make a bowl game under Scott Satterfield. But I like the Seminoles in this game. I like the fact that Florida State is already going to be battle-tested with the game against LSU. Louisville will be too. A little bit battle-tested in the first two few weeks. But I like Florida State's quality of opponents. I like that Florida State is coming off a bye week, well-rested after those games. And the Seminoles only lost to the Cardinals by 8 last year, 31-23. to I believe the secondary can shut down the Louisville passing attack led by Malik Willis. Willis. Now I believe the offense for Florida State can exploit a Louisville defense that was just 95th in the country last year against the pass. I believe Jordan Travis has a big day. These new wide receivers have now had four weeks to get prepared uh, and, and build some chemistry. And I believe Florida State lights it up through the air. And even though it's on the road, they do take down Louisville in a game that will be crucial by season's end. They then come back home to take on Boston College, a team they beat by three on the road last year, 26-23. Boston College, at that point in time, was struggling with injuries. They weren't fully healthy. Uh, they should be now. But ultimately, I don't think that makes a difference. I think Florida State will beat Boston College. I believe the offense is re relatively similar. I believe both teams are around the same when it comes to offense. Boston College owns the edge in the passing defense. Florida State owns the edge in the rushing defense. And ultimately, Florida State is going to own the edge with the home field. They have the home field advantage. And Tallahassee, as we know, is a very difficult place to play. Boston College typically struggles against Florida State regardless of where the game is played as well. The Seminoles do have the Eagles number. We're going to get Florida State the win here. And just like that, they are 3-1, a fantastic start for Mike Norvell in year three. 
They stay at home now to take on Wake Forest, a team they lost to by 21 last year. The ACC runner-up last year winning the ACC Atlantic but falling to Pittsburgh in that championship game. The Demon Deacons guys are the real deal. We've talked a little bit about Florida State secondary. This will be their biggest test so far when it comes to the secondary because Wake Forest has one of the best passing attacks in the country with one of the best quarterbacks in the country and Sam Hartman and then one of the top wide receivers in A.T. Perry. But here's the thing. I think Florida State is able to exploit Wake Forest's weakness. And their weakness is a defense that ranked 111th against the run last year. So not only do I believe the Seminoles will have great success against the run, I also think that Wake Forest has a bit of a Clemson hangover here. Because the week prior, the Demon Deacons will be hosting the Tigers. And if they win that game, they're coming in high, might overlook the Seminoles. If they lose that game, they're devastated because I expect it to be relatively close. And the Demon Deacons know that in what should be a special year, they will no longer be in the driver's seat and in control of their own destiny in the ACC. Off that Clemson game, Florida State, in a went away, upset Wake Forest. And the Seminoles are now 4-1. and one. The schedule gets tough after that. I will say that we have them losing to both NC State and Clemson. Last year they fell to the Wolfpack by 14, 28 to 14, and NC State's the real deal, guys. Great quarterback in Devin Leary, phenomenal defense across the board from the defensive line, the linebacking core, the secondary. Nine starters back on that side of the ball. Dave Doran's squad is loaded. And the fact that the Seminoles have to travel to North Carolina State, it doesn't bode well for me. NC State will not lose much this year. They're certainly not going to lose to the Seminoles. So Florida State drops that game, and they drop that game to Clemson. Yes, they hung with the Tigers last year, only fell 30-20. to 20, And again, that late touchdown kind of made that score look a little bit worse uh, than obviously it really was. But Clemson's defense simply will be too much. That Clemson defensive line will absolutely destroy this Florida State offensive line. We talk about the LSU game, a battle in the trenches. Who can win the battle at the line of scrimmage? Florida State will struggle at times to win that battle, and they certainly will here against Clemson. A defense that's going to be one of the best in the country, an offense that should take a step forward. Florida State, to me, just isn't quite there yet to start taking on Clemson and winning those games against the Tigers. So they drop two in a row after a promising four and one start. They're four and three. They get their second bye week of the year and take on Georgia Tech, and you can chalk that up as a quick victory. Yes, a couple years ago, the Yellow Jackets spoiled Mike Norvell's opener with the Seminoles, beat them in Tallahassee. But the Yellow Jackets will be one of the worst teams in the ACC this year. They will not come into Tallahassee and win this year. Florida State wins in dominating fashion. So boom, they are one win away, guys, from a bowl game. Can they get it? It will not come against Miami. Last year, they beat Miami 31-28, the first time they defeated their hated in-state rivals since 2017. I think this rivalry is starting to mean something again. Florida State and Miami are both trending up, in my opinion. And soon, we're going to start seeing these teams competing again in top 25, top 15 matchups. It was this rivalry. If it wasn't heated enough, it's going to be more, even more heated. They're starting to get that way. And you might even see that again this year. But... The game is at Miami. Say what you want. There's no home field advantage. There is a slight edge there. But you know who has the bigger edge? The biggest edge outside of everything is Tyler Van Dyke. He is the X factor, the quarterback for Miami. He is the difference maker, and he's a guy that I think will be able to exploit this Florida State secondary. So again, uh, Devin Leary, Tyler Van Dyke, Sam Hartman, guys like that, those are players uh, that are going to really give this Florida State secondary some issues. And a Florida State secondary is going to have to figure out how to stop them. But ultimately, Miami offensively, to me, will be too much for Florida State. The Hurricanes win, but Florida State clenches bowl eligibility with a win at Syracuse. It's a trap game if I've ever seen one. Syracuse is extremely underrated. They have the rushing attack to exploit a Florida State rushing defense that we do think improves, but still isn't up there as one of the best in the conference yet. It's in the Carrier Dome. Syracuse is a team that, as we said, we think they're going to be a lot better than their record shows. The talent simply is there. It's a very talented squad. It's just a tough schedule. Syracuse easily could win this game against Florida State. They only fell to the Seminoles by three last year in Tallahassee. But I think Mike Norvell and his team will sense the urgency. The urgency to get a win, to clinch bowl eligibility, and make sure that the next two weeks they don't even have to worry about it. They beat Syracuse. They get that sixth win. They get their seventh win with the win against Louisiana. Shouldn't be much of an issue there, in theory. One of the better teams in the Sun Belt, but in theory should be a win. And they close out the year with a home game against Florida, a team they only lost to by three last year. Had the Seminoles won that, they would have gone bowling. Many will be picking Florida State to win this game. 
We are not. We're going to predict them to lose this game to the Gators. They have not defeated Florida since 2017. I believe this game will be extremely close when it is all said and done. But I believe that Anthony Richardson, AR-15, is going to be another big difference maker, not just in this game, but over the course of the season for Florida. I believe the Florida defense gets better over the course of the year and should be at full strength and the best they can be in the season finale, a game that could be crucial for Florida's bowl hopes, possibly, when it's all said and done. I believe Florida, at the end of the day, just has this slight edge over the Seminoles, especially when it comes to, I believe, offensive explosiveness and maybe that uh, front seven when it comes to the defense. The Gators win a close one in Tallahassee, but at the end of the day, guys, yes, it hurts to lose to a rival, but the Seminoles will be back in the postseason. Florida State, we have going 7-5, and five, making their first bowl game under Mike Norvell. Things start to cool off a little bit in Tallahassee. The foundation has been set, and the only way to go is up for Mike Norvell at Florida State. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below, including, again, those expert picks over on the gridironexpert.com. Make sure to go check those out and sign up today. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.